Hot today, everybody. This is Weekend Edition. I'm Jason Salas, and we are glad you are watching or streaming us because a work session for proposed Chamorro Land Trust rules and regulations held and public input allowed, with most of the concerns centered on three proposed rule changes. I think they proposed a one-time switch, if you're able to review that. The second thing was transferring to a person, a relative. So it has to be within the third degree of consanguinity because before, uh, the switches or transfers could occur to just anybody, uh, regardless of relation. And then the other one was to improve transparency, the, re the reporting of the list. That, of course, Agency Chief Jack Hattig, who says while CLTC leases talked about the proposed rules and regs, which were formulated after a scathing AG review, found a majority of leases violated existing CLTC rules. Other issues outside of those rules came up as well, including allowing non-native inhabitants to occupy property from the CLTC. It was uh, raised up by, uh, by a lessee, but it's not qualified under the Act. Should we be able to give that person uh, beneficiary designation or qualification? That was brought up. Another one was the priority of being landless versus owning land. That was brought up. As it stands, CLTC applicants who are landless are given priority placement in the awarding of leases. The CLTC, for the time being, had previously said its leasees would be given the okay to grow marijuana for medicinal purposes on Chamorro Land Trust property. But Hattig says the commission is now seeking further clarification from the Attorney General regarding the new recreational cannabis law. The next meeting is on the 18th. Well, we could see a third column for an independent candidate on the next ballot for the legislative race. The Independent Candidate Election Reform Act of 2019 was introduced Wednesday by Republican Senator Will Castro with his legislation setting deadlines for the independent candidate to file their nomination with the GEC. It also caps the amount of independent candidates to 15 to be placed on the ballot. And according to his Bill 32, the GEC shall officially record and process independent candidates in chronological order of their receipt of completed filings. In other island news headlines tonight, the chairwoman of the RNC will be visiting Guam this week. Rhonda Robney McDaniel will be here as part of two major fundraising visits to benefit the local Grand Old Party, as well as meeting with party members from Guam and the CNMI. McDaniel was invited by the local Republican Party. She'll speak before the Guam Chamber of Commerce on the topic of our island's role in today's political climate. This is her second term serving as the national chairperson and is the second woman to be elected to that role. She's also the niece of Senator Mitt Romney, who, of course, ran for president in 2012. McDaniel's going to be here from the 15th and the 16th. Elsewhere tonight, with April being Sexual Assault Awareness Month, the Guam Coalition Against Sexual Assault and Family Violence has launched a unique community awareness campaign, getting people to start talking about pressing issues. Our Joan Ugancharfris has more on the Talking Rocks campaign. It's all about breaking the silence and starting the dialogue on violence prevention. Guam Coalition Against Sexual Assault and Family Violence Executive Director well, yes, Cynthia Cabot explains a theme for this year. And when we normally talk about sexual assault, that is usually a very serious topic. And so what we wanted to do was come up with a campaign. So with our team here at the Coalition, came up with this Talking Rocks, because what we wanted to do was also to promote opportunities for starting up the conversation. So it's also meaning talking is cool, so talking rocks in that regard. Along with a proclamation signing declaring April Sexual Assault Awareness Month and the 7th through the 13th as National Crime Victims Rights Week, hashtag Talking Rocks was officially launched. Cabot says that talking is healthy and that it is a way to encourage everyone to start talking about more of the healthy relationships. We do the hashtag and, and uh, look at ways that you can tag us as well. This is one way that we can generate interest with the younger folks who are more inclined to do that. So when they, look, when they find these talking rocks at establishments that we are partnering up on throughout our communities, then we ask that they also participate, take a selfie, a photo with it, tag us, and this is one way that they can help us start the conversation. The nonprofit organization was established back in 2006 and aims to address sexual assault and family violence with one united voice. And we partner up with many government um, agencies here on Guam to address the issue of domestic violence, sexual assault, stalking, sex trafficking here on Guam. So with that, it's more like being able to provide a resource for our partners. If you would like more information, you can visit guamcoalition.org 
And for a listing of island resources, head over to PacificRegionResources.org. What we wanted to, to get out to the community is that we can develop opportunities for supporting healthy families, healthy communities. And we can do that by starting with talking, by communicating with any relationship, be it familial, be it romantic, be it just with you know, your, your classmate, for example. It's about being able to communicate well without the, the fear of repercussions or any kind of, um, say, you know, without the bullying that comes with. Reporting for Guam's News Network, I'm Jonah Gancharfris. Also this evening, with high school graduation season just around the corner, the Guam Department of Education is inviting anyone to apply for an honorary diploma. Education Board Chairman Mark Mangiola says it honors Guam's greatest generation. These are survivors of the war whose education were um, you know, cut short or was interrupted because of uh, the occupation. And some of the stories that our Manonku tell us about you know, the, the struggles of war and also trying to maintain an education, uh, you know, it, we really need to honor these folks. To apply or nominate someone you know, you can call the superintendent's office. Their number is 300-1621. That's 300-1621. Also tonight, we want to tell you about an event that affords students the opportunity to directly interact with professionals as well as explore career interests and other career paths that they may not have considered prior. Our Chris Barnett has more now on the J.P. Torres Success Academy. Access your career pathway. That was the theme for this year's Job Fair at J.P. Torres Success Academy in Santa Rita. Now, unlike traditional career days that other educational institutions organize, the Job Fair Committee at J.P. Torres taking a different route to better serve their student population. T. Memory Retchie explains why the Job Fair is the evolution of career days. The difference here is we actually get to turn out applications, show them our resumes, which gives us a better chance of getting hired compared to other people out there because we get to talk to them face to face. They get to see what's good about us. JP Tor is an adult high school that offers an accelerated curriculum toward graduation. Students range from the ages of 17 to 21 and they complete all educational requirements between the school year. Reps from the military, construction companies, the American Job Center, and the Guam Contractors Association's Trades Academy were present. Now, Trevor Cruz of the Trades Academy explains why trades are a realistic option for high school students. College is not uh, for everyone, so trying to give them another opportunity. If they like working with their hands, they want to get skilled, they want to come to school over at the Trades Academy. For Guam's News Network, Chris Barnett reports. And now in our next report, with April being Autism Awareness Month, the Guam Fire Department has teamed up with Autism Community Together for the first ever fire truck pool for autism. It all started with the phone call to ACT member Josephine Bloss. He said they wanted to do something for the autism community um, during Autism Month and um, he threw out the fire truck pull and we had to jump on it because we thought it was such an awesome event. According to Guam Fire Department spokesperson Kevin Riley, GFD is always looking for opportunities to assist the community. I've known major for a long time um, and I just figured it you know is that that month for autism that we can we can do something great to help these guys. The first annual fire truck pool for autism is set to take place on Saturday April 27th in front of Adeloupe. The event begins at 4 p.m. with check-ins starting at 3. The cost per team is $300 and includes an event dry fit t-shirt with 100% of the proceeds to benefit ACT. The teams are going to pull a fire truck, a fully loaded fire truck, and um, 10 people per team. And so we're having a men's division, women's division, co-ed division, at least four females. It could be more, but at least four females to make up a co-ed team. And uh, today we, we decided to go ahead and had, add a high school division because we've gotten some inquiries about that. Teams will be pulling the fire truck, which is about 40,000 pounds. 50 feet and will be competing for best times. It will be a day for the whole family to enjoy with jumpers, food trucks and more. This is something um, very worthwhile cause. Uh, you know, we have some of our members in the fire department who have children that have been diagnosed with autism and um, it's just a good way to get out there and, and support. We know the struggle and of course, you know, a lot of people don't realize that we deal with patients who are autistic at scenes, at car accidents. Um, so we're very familiar and it's 
it's something that everybody's on board with. Bloss is truly appreciative of all the support from GFD and the entire community. Autism touches every aspect. If, if you don't have a child with autism, maybe a grandchild, a niece, nephew, or, or you just know somebody that has a child with autism. And in the past few years, it's really, it's really grown and we just want to get the, the awareness out there that, hey, we're here, the autism community together is here. And if there's anybody out there that um, feels alone because they have a child with autism, please give us a call. We're here to support each other. So we definitely thank uh, Guam Fire Department for their support of our family, you know, because here on Guam, we're, we're one big family. So, you know, we, we invite the public to come out and, um, and join. And it's going to be a great time, you know, whether you win or lose, it's just going to be fun to be involved. You can show your support and register your teams now by calling Bloss at 687-1284 or email autismcommunityguam at gmail.com. Reporting for Guam's News Network, I'm Jonah Gancharfres. All right, thanks again, Joan, doing double duty on tonight's show. Well, please stay tuned because when we come back, we tell you what was buzzing on social media. Trend spotting is coming up. There are more ways to experience Guam via KUAM News, giving you what you want, when you want, and how you want it. From smart devices, Alexa, what's in the news? Here's your flash briefing. Over the web, on mobile, on streaming platforms, with immersive, interactive formats, and via social media where it's more than just content, it's conversation. More ways to keep you informed and entertained whenever you want it, wherever you are, on whatever device you're using. A simple handshake, that's all Jake Calvo needed when he started his company. Today, 80 years later, we like to say thank you to all of you who have taken our hand in trust. Thank you to the dreamers. Thank you to the realists. Thank you to the family oriented. Thank you to the entrepreneurial. Thank you to those climbing the corporate ladder and to the ones starting a new life together. Thank you to the traditionalists and the edgy to the young at heart and the old souls. Thank you to the daring, to the protective, to the practical. Thank you to the hopeful, to all of you from all of us, our deepest, happiest, and infinite thanks. 80 years here for you. 80 years thanks to you. Calvo's Insurance, a legacy of trust. Looking for a great deal on a new Chrysler, Dodge, Jeep, or Ram? Then get to Cars Plus in Mighty now for our spring sales event. Like a new Jeep Compass Sport, $166 per paycheck. Or a new Chrysler Pacifica LX, $220 per paycheck. Or save $8,500 on a new Ram 1500. How about a new Jeep Wrangler Sport, only $274 per paycheck. Low 1.99% financing is available on approved credit. Save thousands during our spring sales event going on now at Cars Plus in Mighty. Cars Plus, driven by you. Guam's auto appearance specialist, Elegant Reflections, has been providing the automotive industry with professional detailing and car care products at its highest quality from complete detailing, full interior detailing, exterior detailing, headlamp restoration, hand washing, seat and carpet shampoo, engine degreasing, undercarriage cleaning, paint sealant, fabric protection, paint oxidation removal, and so much more. Visit us at our new location. Call 646-5555 for an appointment. Elegant Reflections, Guam's auto appearance specialist. Over 20 years of experience. Well, everybody, in one of our busiest weeks on KUM Digital this week, we were all over the island shooting, streaming some really, really cool events. Here's Asha with what we did and what you had to say about it on Trendspot. Hey, everyone, I'm Asha Robles, and here's what happened this week on Trendspotting. Midweek. Karm filed a report that got a ton of feedback after a viral video circulated on WhatsApp group chats of a Jeep doing circles on the reef. Local Jeep enthusiasts stressed their love of the environment and their tight community to make sure one crazy clip didn't give their community a bad name. You know, we try to make a difference and for one particular video to be viral, we try not to let that step, um, put us down basically because we are trying to do real good. 
James Martinez expressed his views and stated, As in any community, there's always going to be a couple bad apples in the bunch. But for the most part, off-roaders are responsible people and good stewards of our environment. Kudos to this group of individuals for stepping up to the plate to plant trees, remove trash, and protect the environment for future generations. A great example of being a responsible citizen. Last Saturday, our digital team took a trip to the Micronesian Mall to check out the glorious return of Jollibee. Jollibee! A massive sea of people gathered outside the popular worldwide restaurant for their signature sweet spaghetti. 15-year-old Landon Loriano was the first customer in the doors after waiting for 12 straight hours in the rain and the darkness. I was here at 9 o'clock p.m. People from all walks of life made signs, made new friends, did chants, and patiently stood in line for their first local taste of chicken joy in over a decade. When it was our turn to sit down at the table, Ken, Sabrina, and Jason did a hilarious mukbang, giving you a real-time review of several of the entrees. Here's how you guys reacted. Top fan Debbie Davis from Bardstown, Kentucky chimed in and said, Looks delicious. I'm jealous. Chicken looks great. Bet it's delicious. And Roseanne was basically drooling over her computer screen. She stated, My favorite next to Chicken Joy is the burger steak. Hope you'll try it too. On Tuesday, we headed back to the Micronesian Mall to livestream another grand opening, the highly anticipated Pepper Lunch. I joined Ken this time to try out their sizzling mills. As we were chowing down, here's some of the stuff our viewers were saying on the other side of the screen. Esther Ria said, Half a day as she watched the stream from Florida. And Nako gave me the thumbs up. Cool salmon fried rice. I'm loving it. All right, stay tuned. Crime Stoppers is next. Advances in technique and medications used to prevent dental pain have shattered the myth that a dental visit is something to fear, even the dreaded root canal or wisdom tooth extraction swabbing or spraying a topical numbing agent on before the injection, and using different techniques and anesthetics can create a relatively comfortable or pain-free injection. Injections are often the most feared procedure. Some patients don't like the sounds or the vibrations of decay removal. If you're still nervous or you gag easy, despite these techniques, very safe oral medicines can be taken before your dental appointment to eliminate all fears or some clinics use nitrous oxide gas. Pain relievers can easily be prescribed to eliminate mild to severe dental discomfort after any visit. For your helpful dental minute, I'm Dr. Kenny Bourgeois of Paradise Smiles. We shall never know all the good that a simple smile can do. Looking for a great deal on a new Chrysler, Dodge, Jeep, or Ram? Then get to Cars Plus and Mighty now for our spring sales event. Like a new Jeep Compass Sport, $166 per paycheck. Or a new Chrysler Pacifica LX, $220 per paycheck. Or save $8,500 on a new Ram 1500. How about a new Jeep Wrangler Sport, only $274 per paycheck. Low 1.99% financing is available on approved credit. Save thousands during our spring sales event going on now at Cars Plus in Mighty. Cars Plus, driven by you. Hello day, everybody, and welcome back to the show. Joining me right now is the Sarge Paul Tapal from the Guam Police Department. Sarge, welcome as always. Hey, half a day. Thanks for having me, man. Uh, okay, one thing that I know, because I've known you a long time, one thing that you have always tried to fight, mm -hmm. literally and figuratively, is drugs in our community. And they are no, no more a problem than when you see the impact they have on children. Yeah, absolutely. On young people. Yeah, you, you know, it, it's, it's really, you know, that's, that's, what we, that's what we do and why we do our job. And the purpose behind it is really to help control and, and of course, to help, uh, you know, teach our kids to make right choices. And, uh, you know, somebody asked, you know, Sarge, how do you fix the problem that's happening here with crystal methamphetamine and all of this issue? And it really, there is, there is no solution to that. It's just how we mitigate it in law enforcement and, of course, to the court's interdiction and, of course, to recovery. What we, you know, the real solution lies is 
that we can work back and where we can work with the kids and start teaching them how to make right choices and give them that sense of empowerment where they can actually have the tools to make good and bad choices and you know they can actually walk away unscathed of the harmful effects of any substance that's illegal or substance that is considered contraband within the schools and within um, that's in the status of law. Okay, and I'm glad you brought that up because any substance is the, is the key phrase. And for young people who may, you know, they watch the news every once in a while, they see mm -hmm. stuff flying by their news feed and Facebook. So many times drugs is defined yeah. like on Guam as, as marijuana and meth and ice. Yes. But it's actually a lot broader than that. It is, it is. And, uh, you know, we're starting to see a lot of our uh, younger kids um, are actually doing experimental, uh, you know, ingestion of, of, of different slews of substance from gas to uh, butane to um, even just your household items. And this is why we're reaching out to the parents to really be the stewards of parents and be the parental guidance to start teaching your kids what's right and wrong. And, uh, you know, I, I, guess, I guess I can comment to this because of the fact that it's actually gone viral on social media with that kid that's, you know, um, you know it's unfortunate that that kid laying there that's being shared on social media it's, may have been succumbed to something other than, than uh, you know, that of just the, the common alcohol or, you know, common beer or common hard liquor that you can get off your mom's shelf. It, it may be attributed to something else. And, you know, um, it really is, it, 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 it broke my heart when I saw that and when I read the reports and I was like, wow, that's a shame, you know, because here's something that a kid can get off the shelf for $1.99 and not knowing the full effects. It's really, you know, as we ask ourselves, where are the parents? And that's where is the question that everybody asks is where are the parents in this? And, you know, for me personally, as a parent and as a father, um, no parent should go through that to sit there beside your, um, you know, your loved ones and uh, really just holding on to hope and praying that the kid pulls through. And, it, you know, it's really unfortunate that this is happening and moving from one extreme to another extreme to where it's now you have parents who have control and who are, allow their kids to start by vaping and, and, and uh, you know, being engaged in, in these sort of activities. It's really where do we set the boundaries as parents? And this is where you as parents you do have to set boundaries and mm -hmm. it's important that you establish those boundaries because this is how you can help us in our line of work in really um, teaching the kids about resistance and control and of course saying no and, and, and making better choices because it really boils down to critical thinking and parental involvement by setting those boundaries in, in which, you know, um, stand your ground and just be a parent. Mm. What kind of resources are available, Sarge, on, on island or on online, maybe even even more importantly, because so many parents have not had this conversation with their kids and they're like, you know, I don't even know where to start. My kid is, you know, like say in high school, yeah. they're at a very rambunctious age. They're very rebellious and, you know, they're probably going to just, you know, reject everything I say anyway. We'll, we'll, we'll scale it back down to middle school. Okay. Right. We'll use middle school because that's where the hormones and everything starts kicking in into the body and all the changes and stuff. And this is where the rambunctious activity happens. Fortunate about it is that we have the Department of Education in a partnership and they have a lot of interdiction and intervention programs. Aside from that, we also have Guam Behavior. And these are the resources that are available to you when it becomes recognized either by the school or by with us with the Guam Police Department. But it starts with the forefront. It starts at the home front where parents need to recognize these type of behaviors and be that parent, be the steward of, the, of, of their family and say, hey, look, we do have an issue. Maybe I do need, uh, do need to reach out to Guam Behavior. Maybe I do need to reach out to our school counselors because if you're starting to see repeat um, issues happening with your kids and these are telltale signs that they're on the path for, um, you know, something as tragic as what's going on and what you're seeing in social media. Okay. Well, do we have a crime of the week this week? Uh, no, no. That's why we wanted to take advantage of this time just to really talk about it because, you know, with the passage of... We're uh, using the whole segment to talk about this. Yeah, this is how you know, important it is. Yeah. You know, uh, Bill 3235, it is now law and, uh, you know, everybody has been calling. What are we going to do? So I can answer that with the Guam Police Department because the recreational use or the decriminalization of uh, cannabis is now law. We at the Guam Police Department, and I want to assure this to the community that we will do everything that is required by us, by the mandates of law to do the enforcement uh, aspect of what's required with the, the passage of, of the bill. Mm -hmm. But again, it falls down under responsibility. You as a responsible adult, you decide to choose to use, uh, you know, to engage in recreation cannabis, but you also as a responsible parent. You know, we're seeing the, you know, the question is, well, the kids have access to alcohol, easily accessible. Why is that? You know, the teachers ask, you know, these kids are, you know, the kids in the schools are, are they, they come and drunk and everything. We need to scale that back and we really do need to ask, 
why do the kids have access to this? Where are the parents? These are, this, this, this is where we want to bring out. Maybe again, it really is me being the father that's coming out hard, but really we need to harp on the parents and we need to ask the parents to really start understanding what's happening to your kids and understanding who they're hanging out with and what what's really going on with their life because it's important. Mm. And maybe it, it all comes out to the fact that everybody has a choice to make. It, it is, it is. And you know, every time I end my, my, my presentations with the schools, and we've been fortunate to be a part of uh, the partnership with DOE because we've come up with programs. We have this program called Chat with a Cop. We sit down and we talk to the kids, you know, particularly in the middle school kids. I just recently finished two middle schools talking to them about alcohol abuse and alcohol awareness. And really it is, the final statement that I leave is really, it's about critical thinking. You need to know what's right and wrong and you need to deploy critical decision making skills. The schools teach that, but parents need to be the first line of uh, educa uh, educating the kids about making critical decisions. Mm -hmm. Schools can, should only reinforce that. And it really is, again, going to fall back to the parents. And as we move into this new era with the passage of 32-35, uh, 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 you know, the recreational use of cannabis, it really is important now that parents get involved. Um, you know, rest assured again, the Guam Police Department, we're going to do everything. We're going to do everything like what we do with the DUI enforcement with um, driving impaired driving. And we are going to do everything that's required of us, that's mandated by us, by law, to make sure that everybody follows the rules and the laws pertaining to this particular particular bill. So we kindly ask the parents, take ownership. All you right. Know. Well, thanks so much, Charles. We appreciate Absolutely. It, Thank always. you. Okay, everybody, if you are watching this segment online, make sure you scrub back, just rewind the clip, because the Sarge had a lot of good information. Make sure you and your kids have that talk. Okay, we're back after this. Ruby Tuesday's Seafood Sensations menu is back. Choose from your favorite dishes made with succulent lobster tail, shrimp, or our newest sensations with crab legs. Try out appetizers like crab fondue or stuffed shrimp. Pick an entree like the lobster tail or crab leg dinner. Select the lobster carbonara or the deep sea pasta. It's all ready and waiting for you. Get hooked on seafood sensations for a limited time only at Ruby Tuesday Guam. Hit it! That's what I'm talking about. Wait! Okay now, from the beginning. Hit it, boy. Triple J says yes. Easy financing? Yes. Easy trade-in? Yes. Fast and friendly? Yes. Find the car of your dreams like our Mazda CX-3 at only $19,995 or the Honda HRV at only $180 per paycheck. Get top market value on your trade-in, explore payment options that work for you, and get pre-approved instantly. We'll even go the extra mile to deliver your vehicle to your home or office. Triple J says yes. Just click, pick, drive, and purchase your next vehicle at TripleJGuam.com today. Triple J. Customers first. It is time now for your weekend birthday shoutouts, courtesy of Coldstone Creamery. It's a weekend. Happy birthday going out to Doris Metanonia, who celebrates a birthday on Saturday the 13th. Mom, even if you are miles, miles away, I'm wishing you a happy birthday. Love and miss you always. One day I will be with you there to celebrate your birthday. Love your only daughter in Guam and son-in-law. Also, happy birthday to Jesse Guzman from your wife, kids, and family. We love you so much and thank you for all that you do for all of us. It is also a very happy birthday to Franklin Gregory Santos. Wish you all the best today and always. We love you from your village down in Inarahan. Awesome. And on Sunday the 14th, it is a happy birthday to Frankie Lynn Rosario, who blows out the candles today. Hope everyone has a fantastic weekend birthday. Just go to KUM.com, scroll about halfway down the page, and then fill out the form with a picture included. That's all it takes to register then tune in and you will definitely make somebody's day. It's our pleasure to do it. All right, that's all the time we have. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you next time. Closed captioning is brought to you by IT&E. Explore your world. KUAM TV 8.